But I think about growing up here in L.A. and in the neighborhood that I grew up in and, you know. You grew up in South Central? Yeah, middle of South Central. I went to Fremont High School. And it's very few people that can go into any neighborhood without no problems. Kobe Bryant can go into any neighborhood in L.A. and he will be welcomed and cheered and revered because that was the type of person he was for us in L.A. He was a superhero and, you know, he'll be missed like, like no other. Uh, he, he's, he's from Philly, but he had that L.A. attitude. Yes, <laughs> he did. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing yes, you the did. best, you know, what, oh, yeah. what, I, what I learned from Kobe, you know, um, before he tried to master the game of basketball, he was working on mastering the game of Kobe. You know, before you can master anything that you're doing, you have to master yourself mm -hmm. with discipline, uh, consistency, uh, working on the things that you're not good at, um, and not being afraid to take the shot in the moment. Right. And um, he, he taught me how to better myself and to go into things and never be satisfied, never be satisfied. Um, you know, there's always tomorrow. You can always do better. You know what I mean? You can always give it a better shot, a better, a better effort. And I learned that from Kobe Bryant. Richard, you were on the other team, but on the court during one of the most visual moments of Kobe's career. And it wasn't winning a title. It was when he snapped his Achilles. You were on the bench right at that side of the court. Can you describe what you saw and then what happened afterward so I, I remember right there he asked Harrison Barnes, like, hey, did you kick me, right? Like, I could see yeah. him mouth it, right? And we were just like, oh, no, you right? Because if you go back and look at he had been playing 48 minutes, 48 minutes. Like, yep. he, had, he hadn't missed many games or many minutes in the no game. No minutes. He was, he, he, was, he was getting that team into he was the playoffs. That he was just, he, and, and he knew that they needed those two free throws. It was late in the game. And we're all sitting there like, oh, maybe it's just a tweak, maybe what? Because you saw him just like every other Achilles injury. It's just this. But... Kobe just limped over there, knocked down two free throws, and then limped off the court. And so even in those moments, we're all hoping and thinking for the best. Like, yeah. oh, well, if obviously if he can make If he could do throws, that, he can't even he can be do, that hurt, maybe, right? Yeah, maybe it's just a pull, maybe it's a strain, maybe it's a, and it was just, it, it, it's just one of those things that like, very rarely is like the real life thing like a movie, very rarely. Right, there's no way that you can, you know, guys like Derek Jeter, Tiger Woods, like when they, Michael Jordan, very, you know, our greatest heroes a lot of times, their, their, their story seems like a movie and even him coming back and maybe they didn't get to the, the level that they wanted to later in his career, but for him to end it on the note that he did is something that no one could write. I don't even think he could. Yeah. Unbelievable. And look, Kobe's story is complicated. He did not live a perfect life. He was not a saint. The sexual assault charge in Colorado is going to be part of his story. There was no criminal conviction, but there was a civil settlement. Um, he did issue a public apology. And then I saw him really spend serious effort through the rest of his life in working on how he treated women, how he talked to women, what he did for women. And for me, that meant a lot that he wanted to do better and we saw him and what he did for women's sports. He was one of the loudest advocates. College basketball games, WNBA games, supporting the U.S. women's national soccer team. Oregon Sabrina, Sabrina Ionesco just broken up before her game yesterday, thinking about her friend Kobe. Richard, his impact on women's sports, I mean, you guys yeah, can talk it, to it, that. Yeah, yeah it, it was, look, you look at Steph Curry, and, and you want to know one way to really get involved with women's sports? Have daughters that are passionate about it <laughs> and see somebody that, like, your daughter, you want those role models that your daughters look up to to support. And he was, again, like you said, one of the loudest voices. Yeah, and when you got a guy of that magnitude mm -hmm. chipping in to women's sports, it has a tremendous impact. And, you know, you talk about the course of his life. You're right. He was not a perfect human. And I think that's what connected us to him yeah. is we watched him from a 17-year-old boy mm -hmm. grow into this man that we come to know as Kobe Bryant. And, you know, he, that's He wasn't I'm flawless. Mm -hmm. But what we love about him, he was always trying to get better. Be right? Yes. Yes. He was always trying to get there. So that's what we love about him. We love the journey of the man trying to strive for perfection and in so many ways right so many things that, that he felt like yeah. I can do better every time we seen him fall he came back stronger and better 
it just meant a lot to so many here. Thank you guys so much for everything today. I want to thank everyone who joined the show. Our condolences go out to the entire families of Kobe, Gianna, all seven other people who were lost in the accident. In honor of Kobe, we're going to end the show with 24 seconds of silence.